Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. Since in the last few days, weeks and months we've gotten a ton of new updates, features and settings that dramatically improve both the stability and performance, this is my new and complete setup guide for Yuzu Emulator showing you all of the best steps and settings for the best possible stability and performance in many of your favourite games on this Nintendo Switch emulator. As per usual, this guide contains absolutely no filler or BS, it simply contains all of the best settings for getting the best possible experience on this emulator. As I said previously, there have been a lot of changes to Yuzu in the last few weeks alone. These include brand new settings that dramatically improve the speed at which we build and compile our shader caches, the addition of per game settings allowing you to configure your individual games as you see fit, and on top of this I'm also going to be showing you a neat little trick that can dramatically improve the stability and reliability of Nvidia's threaded optimization setting. This setting, if you aren't aware, can boost your performance by anywhere between 20 to 50%. As usual, absolutely anything I use in this video can be found in links down in this video's description, and as always, if you need any help with anything, don't be afraid to leave a comment down below or ask over on my Discord server, links to which you'll also find down in the description. There's a hell of a lot to cover in this guide, so if you appreciate it, please do leave me a like down below. For now, let's jump straight across to my desktop and get this setup guide started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is download and get the emulator installed on your system. We're also going to be installing the dependencies that are required. In the description of this video, you'll find this link to this download page. Before you install anything, please, please make sure to install Microsoft Visual C++. These files are required for this emulator to work at all, so please make sure you have this installed. Once you have it installed, we're going to be clicking the download for Windows x86 button. This is going to download the Yuzu Auto Installer tool. Once it's downloaded, we can close our browser. Here on my desktop, you can see I have all the files that will be necessary for this emulator. I have my install tool, I have my decryption keys, and I have my Switch firmware. If you're looking for easy to follow guides on how to dump these from your Switch, you'll find them over on my Discord server. When we open the installer, you can see you can install either Yuzu Early Access or Yuzu Mainline. This guide is mainly going to be focused around Early Access since all of the features in it are merged to Mainline anyway after a few days or weeks depending on the amount of testing they require. To install Early Access, you need to be a Yuzu patron. Since I already am one, I'm going to click this top link right here, log in to my Yuzu profile account, then I'm going to click this copy to clipboard to get my login token. Once you have your login token, you want to paste it into this token section here, then click verify. By verifying your token, you can install Yuzu Early Access. I'm also going to install Yuzu, and I'm also not going to be creating these desktop icons. In a moment, I'll show you how to create toolbar shortcuts for this emulator instead. All you have to do is click install, then wait for the emulator to finish its installation process. Once complete, click exit in the bottom right hand corner. We can now get started with getting this emulator set up for the best possible performance. To gain easy access to your emulator builds, all you want to do is click your start menu, then type Yuzu. Here you can see Yuzu Early Access and Yuzu. What you want to do next is right click either Early Access or Yuzu, then select Pin to Taskbar. You should do this with both Early Access and Yuzu Mainline. This gives you a really easy access to both of these emulator versions. All you need to do to launch the emulator and update it to its latest version is click one of these shortcuts. Let's click Early Access for now, get our maintenance tool launched, our emulator updated, and get everything set up from start to finish. Once you load it for the first time, this Derivision Components missing error is going to pop up. This means we are missing our decryption keys. I'm going to show you right now how to add these to the emulator. First, you want to click File, then select Open Yuzu Folder. Inside of this folder, you want to right-click, select New Folder, then title this folder Keys in all lowercase letters. Once you have this Keys folder created, drag and drop this prod.keys file into it. This is how you install your decryption keys for playing any of your Nintendo Switch games. Once you have that done, we are now also going to be installing our firmware files. To install them, you want to come to NAND, your System folder, the contents folder and into this register folder you want to put the contents of your dumped Nintendo Switch firmware. It should look something like this, there should be a lot of .nca files. All you want to do is highlight them all, select copy, then you want to paste these files into this contents registered folder. Please make sure you put them into your NAND system contents registered folder exactly as I have done. 
This is how you install your firmware on Yuzu Emulator. These firmware files are required for games like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and parts of Super Smash Bros Ultimate. Once installed, please store these firmware files in a safe place as you may need them at a later date. To confirm that your key files have been successfully added to the emulator, we're going to close early access, then we're going to relaunch it. When it opens this time, unlike the first, you are not going to get the key derivation error, meaning that your keys are installed correctly in the emulator. Next, we're going to add our games to our games list, simply double click this big plus, then you want to navigate to on your computer wherever you are storing your Switch NSPs or Switch XCIs. It really doesn't matter which file format you use, they will both work identically. I'm going to select my Switch games folder which contains all my games, then I simply need to wait for the games list to populate and show all of my games. And there we go, all of my games are now showing up in my games list correctly. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to install game updates or DLCs. Again, this is very simple. All you need to do is click File, Install File to NAND, then navigate to wherever on your system your game's DLCs or updates are stored. My updates are stored here in this update folder. In the latest versions of Yuzu Emulator, you can install multiple update or DLC files at the same time. So I'm just going to hold Control on my keyboard, then I'm going to click on whichever files I wish to install. Of note, I would like to recommend that you do not install the update for Super Mario Odyssey since that game actually performs and is far less stable on its later updates. Once you have selected any of the update files you wish to add to Yuzu, click the install button, then simply wait for the progress bar to fill up and complete installation. Regardless of if you're installing game updates or DLCs, the installation process is the exact same as I've just shown. Depending on the size of the files you are installing, this process can take a long time, so please just be patient and wait for the process to finish. Since I have now installed my updates and DLC, for Super Smash Bros Ultimate, when I right click it and select Properties, it's going to show up in the window like so, DLC version 1 to 5, then update 8.0.0 which is the update I just installed. Now I also have a few mods installed, I'm going to deactivate these two since I absolutely don't want to use them. I'll show you in a few minutes how to install mods just like these. If you're wanting to search a specific game into the filter bar at the bottom, you can simply search your game's title and it will show up exactly like I just did for Super Smash Bros Ultimate. For now, I'm going to show you how you can correctly configure your controllers. Come to Emulation, Configure, then select the Controls tab at the very bottom. From here and this drop down list, you want to select Custom, then hit the Configure button. First of all, we're going to be deselecting Joy-Cons Docked, you only use this controller for Pokemon and let's go. For every other game, you want to set Player 1 to Pro Controller, then hit Configure. Next, all you want to do is click on and map all of these specific buttons. For your analog sticks, you absolutely need to click Set Analog Stick. When this prompt opens, you want to click OK, then with your thumbstick move it left, then up. Then for your right thumbstick, again, click Set Analog Stick, move it left and up. Then please make sure to map the pressed buttons for your analog sticks. Setting up these controls really couldn't be easier. All you have to do is follow on-screen instructions and make sure to map your controls to the correct buttons. Once everything is mapped, simply click OK in the bottom of the window. You are now done with mapping your Pro Controller. This controller can be used for 99.9% .9 of games. On top of this, you also want to make sure you're using a docked mode. Now, for the 0.01% of games, that is Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, you are required to use this Joy-Cons docked controller here. In order to use this, you need to disable Joy-Cons docked, then you need to configure this pad while at the same time setting a Player 1 controller from Pro Controller to None. As I said, the only circumstance that you'll be using a Joy-Cons docked is for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee. For every single other game, set Pro Controller and make sure to use a docked mode. In this section, we now also have the addition of controller vibrations. This is rumble and HD rumble in games. If you want to disable it, deselect it. I myself prefer it to be on, so I'm going to leave it on. Click OK. We are now done with setting up our controls. Next up, I'm going to guide you through all of the most optimal global settings. First of all, in this general section, you absolutely want to enable multi-core CPU emulation. This is by far one of the most beneficial settings for getting the best performance in any of your games. Now, if like most people, you like a different theme or different colored UI, in this UI general section, you can change your theme from light to dark, dark colorful, midnight blue or midnight blue colorful. For guide consistency, I'm going to leave mine at light for now. The only other thing I'm going to be changing here is to make sure show add-on column is enabled. Then for row to text, I'm going to be setting this to none. I find it that this just makes the user interface look a lot cleaner. 
The next thing we're going to be looking at is our system tab. There's not too much we're going to be changing here. You can change your language, region, time zone and sound output mode. I would advise just leaving these as they are. In the system profile tab, you can add new users. Each of these users will use completely different saves. In the services tab, you should just leave the BCAT backend at none for now. And under file system, there's only one thing you may actually need to change. Now, while it is absolutely not recommended to change the installation NAND folder, you can do it from here. However, if you do change the NAND folder, please make sure that you reinstall any updates, DLCs, or installed system firmwares. Moving on to the CPU tab, there is absolutely nothing you should change here. You do not get any kind of performance benefit by enabling a debug mode and toggling any of the options off. These are simply developer options. In this graphics tab, there are a few things we're going to be changing. You can see we have access to the APIs. You should enable asynchronous GPU emulation and under API, you can change this to either OpenGL or Vulkan. If you have an AMD GPU, you should definitely try out the Vulkan backend. In this graphics advanced section, you should enable use assembly shaders if you are using NVIDIA GPUs and OpenGL. However, if you're using an NVIDIA GPU, I would not advise to turn on the global setting of use asynchronous shader building. We will be turning it on for specific games in their per game configurations in just a moment. For now though, you should just copy the settings I have shown on screen right now for your global configuration settings. If you are an AMD GPU user and are using the Vulkan API, please make sure to enable asynchronous shader building since this setting will greatly improve the speed at which shaders compile, drastically improving your experience in gameplay. As I previously said, if you have an AMD GPU, you should absolutely be using the Vulkan API from this selection window here. For now, let's move on to audio. If you're using Yuzu Early Access with the new audio rewrite, you should definitely disable audio stretching. There's really nothing else you should be changing here, and since we've already gone over how to map your controls, the only thing left is to change any hotkeys you may need to remap, though to be honest, I would advise just leaving these at the emulator's default. Click OK since we are now done with setting up the emulator's best possible default global settings. In the bottom left hand corner, you can see we also have button toggles for swapping between OpenGL and Vulkan, and swapping between docked and undocked, for the most part, I would advise just leaving these button toggles alone. Next up, I'm going to show you how you can download and install any mod files for this emulator. By searching Mario, right clicking and then selecting Open Mod Directory, you can see that I have already got a select few mods installed for this game. To find these mods and many others, click Help, then click Open Mods page. This is going to open the Yuzu Switch Mods repository. This page contains a ton of mods for many of the most popular games on this emulator. By scrolling down our list, we're going to again look for Super Mario Odyssey. You can see here are all of the mods I have installed already. You can see that Applies To shows you which game update these mods specifically work for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to download one of the mods I do not have installed. This in-game filters mod I'm going to download and save it to my desktop. Once it is downloaded, I'm again going to minimize my browser. You can see this in-game filters mod is right here. Right click your game, select open mod directory, then drag this zip file into here. Right click it and using 7-zip, select extract here. This is exactly how you install mods for any game on this emulator. If you're installing mods of your own, make sure the path and file structure is exactly like so with mod name, exefs or romfs, then your specific mod files. By right clicking and selecting properties, you can activate or deactivate any of these mods from this mod list. As I said, the best mods that I find for Super Mario Odyssey are this 1080p mod, disable dynamic resolution, disable FXAA, and disable motion blur. I also like to enable the SMO web applet bypass since this mod can help with a pesky crash that occurs between Cascade and Sand Kingdoms. As you can see, this is a brand new per game settings window. You can adjust any of the specific settings for any of these games. However, for Super Mario Odyssey, the globals we previously set up are absolutely perfect. As I said earlier in the guide, please make sure that you are not using any version other than 1.0.0 since updates 1.1.0, 1.2.0 and 1.3.0 make this game quite unstable. Click OK, we are now done with configuring Super Mario Odyssey. Next up, we're going to go over a few other specific game settings. For The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, again, you want to right click it, select properties, 
These two mods, if you wish to use them, can be found on the mod repository I previously showed you. The next thing we want to change is to come to Graphics and change your API from OpenGL to Vulkan. You may notice that when you change settings and they no longer match your global settings, they are going to be highlighted in a color like so. This is simply showing you that you are no longer using the global settings we previously configured. The next thing you also want to do is to make sure you're using Use Asynchronous Shader Building. This has now been added to the Vulkan API, giving you a much smoother experience in game with practically no stutter at all. For any games where you're utilizing Vulkan, you should absolutely enable Use Asynchronous Shader Building. We are now basically done with The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Please make sure you're using Vulkan for this game since it both functions and renders way, way better when using the Vulkan API. Since we're now done with Link's Awakening, click OK. The next game we're going to be taking a look at is Super Smash Bros Ultimate. Again, to find this game as fast as possible in your games list, just type Smash into the filter bar, then again we're going to right click and select Properties. Next, we're going to be coming to our Graphics tab again, and as I said before, unless you're using an AMD GPU, you should leave this at OpenGL. For NVIDIA GPU users, these settings are absolutely perfect. The only thing we're going to be changing is to enable Use Asynchronous Shader Building at the same time as Use Assembly Shaders. These two settings combined make playing Super Smash Bros Ultimate an absolute pleasure even if you do not have a full shader cache. Again, as with all other games, make sure to hit OK to save your settings. Now that we've gone over all of the most optimal global and per game settings, I'm going to show you some GPU, CPU and RAM optimizations, as well as a neat little admin profile trick that helps keep this emulator running at the best possible performance levels if you have an NVIDIA GPU. First things first, for NVIDIA GPU users, you want to right click your desktop, then select NVIDIA Control Panel. Once this panel opens, I'm just going to bring it to center window, then we're going to come to adjust image settings with preview. From here, you want to select use the advanced 3D settings, click the apply button, then click take me there in the center. Once you arrive at your manage 3D settings window, you want to come to program settings, then you want to click this add button. Now depending on if you're using early access or Yuzu mainline, you want to select your Yuzu EXE from this window, then click add selected program, hit apply, then we want to apply these specific settings. Scroll down to the very bottom and for VSync you want to set this to off, triple buffering wants to be set from off to on, threaded optimization needs to be set from auto to on, moving up a little further, power management mode you want to set this from optimal to prefer maximum performance and from your OpenGL rendering GPU you want to set this to your actual Nvidia GPU. These four settings are very important for getting the best performance on Yuzu. Please make sure to click the apply button or none of these settings are going to affect the emulator. Click the X in the top right hand corner. We are now done with the Nvidia control panel. Next up, we're going to be applying a page file or virtual memory. This is going to drastically help with the stability of Yuzu. All you need to do is search for control panel in your start menu. Once control panel opens, we're looking for system and security. In this section, we're looking for system then in this area we're looking for advanced system settings. From this tab we're looking for this performance area, click the settings button, then we're looking for advanced. You can see right here this is virtual memory, this is a physical disk space that you can use as if it were RAM in case it runs out. Now what you should absolutely do is disable automatic paging, then as a custom size right here you should set this at a minimum of 20,000. The reason we need to set this number so high is that at least at the minute, Yuzu Emulator commits a lot of memory to virtual memory or your page file. If you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, I would advise setting this number to 20 or 25,000. If you only have 8 gigabytes of a physical RAM, you should set this number to 25 or 30,000. Please be aware that if you set this number to 30,000, it is going to use roughly 30 gigabytes of storage on whichever drive you place it. If this is the first time you've applied a page file or virtual memory to your computer, it may prompt you to restart. Before we do that, we're going to apply some power profile settings. Right click your Windows icon and then select Power Options. It should be the second option from the top. Once in this window, you want to come to Additional Power Settings. Then in this window, depending on your CPU, you want to set this either to High Performance or Ryzen High Performance Power Plan. 
depending on the system you're using, be it a desktop or a laptop computer, this setting can drastically help with stability and the stability of performance in many of your games on this and other emulators. Once you're finished, you can close all of these windows. The next thing we're going to be doing is applying some admin specific settings to the emulator's EXEs. To find the folders we require, you're once again going to be loading up the emulator. Once it loads, you want to come to File, open Yuzu folder, and then from here you can close the emulator. Next, you want to click App Data, come to Local, then you want to scroll down until you find this Yuzu folder. First of all, you want to right click on Maintenance Tool.exe, select Properties, Compatibility, then select Run this program as administrator. Please make sure that this is running as administrator before continuing. Next, depending on if you're using Mainline or Early Access, you want to select whichever folder, come to your yuzu.exe, again come to Properties, Compatibility, and make sure to run this also as administrator. Doing this is very, very important since if you're only running a one as administrator, both are not going to work, so please, please make sure that you're running both the maintenance tool and whichever version of the emulator you're using as admin. Now the reason we are doing this is, at the moment at least on NVIDIA's GPU drivers, at least on Windows 10, there is a bug that stops NVIDIA threaded optimization from activating. By running both your Yuzu EXE and the maintenance tool as administrator,